President Obama, look, I listen all the time, including to your governor. Who's somebody who I enjoyed working with a lot before the campaign and now that I'm president? And I know that West Virginia struggles with unemployment. And I know how important coal is to West Virginia and a lot of the natural resources there. That's part of the reason why I've said that we need a comprehensive energy policy that sets us up for a long-term future. For example, nobody has been a bigger promoter of clean coal technology than I am. Testament to that, I ended up being in a whole bunch of advertisements that you guys saw all the time about investing in ways for us to burn coal more cleanly. I've said that I'm a promoter of nuclear energy, something that I think over the last three decades has been subject to a lot of partisan wrangling and ideological wrangling. I don't think it makes sense. I think that that has to be part of our energy mix. I've said that I am supportive and I said this two nights ago at The State of the Union that I am in favor of increased production. So if you look at the ideas that this caucus has, again with respect to energy, I'm for a lot of what you said you are for. The one thing that I've also said, though, and here we have a serious disagreement and my hope is we can work through these disagreements there's going to be an effort on. The Senate side to do so on a bipartisan basis is that we have to plan for the future. And the future is that clean energy cleaner forms of energy are going to be increasingly important.
because even if folks are still skeptical in some cases about climate change in our politics and in Congress, the world is not skeptical about it. If we're going to be after some of these big markets, they're going to be looking to see. Is the United States the one that's developing clean coal technology? Is the United States developing our natural gas resources in the most effective way? Is the United States the one that is going to lead in electric cars? Because if we're not leading, those other countries are going to be leading. So what I want to do is work with West Virginia to figure out how we can seize that future. But to do that, that means there's going to have to be some transition. We can't operate the coal industry in the United States as if we're still in the 1920s or the 1930s or the 1950s. We've got to be thinking what does that industry look like in the next hundred years. And it's going to be different. And that means there's going to be some transition. And that's where I think a well thought through policy of incentivizing the new while recognizing that. There's going to be a transition process and we're not just suddenly putting the old out of business. Right away that has to be something that both Republicans and Democrats should be able to embrace. Congressman Pence, Jason Chaffetz, Utah. Congressman Chaffetz, thank you, MR. President. It's truly an honor. President Obama, great to be here. Congressman Chaffetz, and I appreciate you being here.
I'm one of 22 house freshmen. We didn't create this mess, but we are here to help clean it up. You talked a lot about this deficit of trust. There's some things that have happened that I would appreciate your perspective on. Because I can look you in the eye and tell you we have not been obstructionists. Democrats have the House and Senate and the Presidency. And when you stood up before the American people multiple times and said you would broadcast the health care debates on C-SPAN, you didn't. And I was disappointed, and I think a lot of Americans were disappointed. You said you weren't going to allow lobbyists in the senior most positions within your administration. And yet you did. I applauded you when you said it and disappointed when you didn't. You said you'd go line by line through the health care debate or through the health care bill. And there were six of us, including Dr. Phil Rowe, who sent you a letter and said, we would like to take you up on the offer, we'd like to come. We never heard a letter, we never got a call. We were never involved in any of those discussions. And when you said in the House of Representatives that you were going to tackle earmarks in fact, You didn't want to have any earmarks in any of your bills I jumped up out of my seat and applauded you. But it didn't happen. More importantly, I want to talk about moving forward but if we could address. President Obama, well, how about? Congressman Chaffetz, I would certainly appreciate it.
President Obama, that was a long list, so let me respond. Look, the truth of the matter is that if you look at the healthcare process just over, the course of the year overwhelmingly the majority of it actually was on C-SPAN. Because it was taking place in congressional hearings in which you guys were participating. I mean, how many committees were there that helped to shape this bill? Countless hearings took place. Now, I kicked it off, by the way, with a meeting with many of you, including your key leadership. What is true, there's no doubt about it, is that once it got through the committee, process and there were now a series of meetings taking place all over the capital. Trying to figure out how to get the thing together that was a messy process. And I take responsibility for not having structured it in a way. Where it was all taking place in one place that could be filmed. How to do that logistically would not have been as easy as it sounds. Because you're shuttling back and forth between the House, the Senate, different offices, etc., different legislators. but I think it's a legitimate criticism. So on that one, I take responsibility. With respect to earmarks, we didn't have earmarks in the Recovery Act. We didn't get a lot of credit for it, but there were no earmarks in that. I was confronted at the beginning of my term with an omnibus package that did have A lot of earmarks from Republicans and Democrats, and a lot of people in this chamber. And the question was whether I was going to have a big budget fight.
at a time when I was still trying to figure out whether or not the financial system was melting. Down and we had to make a whole bunch of emergency decisions about the economy. So what I said was let's keep them to a minimum, but I couldn't excise them all. Now, the challenge I guess I would have for you as a freshman. Is what are you doing inside your caucus to make sure that I'm not the only guy who is responsible for this stuff? So that we're working together, because this is going to be a process. When we talk about earmarks, I think all of us are willing to acknowledge that. Some of them are perfectly defensible, good projects. It's just they haven't gone through the regular appropriations process in the full light of day. So one place to start is to make sure that they are at least transparent. That everybody knows what's there before we move forward. In terms of lobbyists, I can stand here unequivocally and say that there has not. Been an administration who was tougher on making sure that lobbyists weren't. participating in the administration than any administration that's come before us. Now, what we did was, if there were lobbyists who were on boards and commissions, that were carryovers and their term hadn't been completed, we didn't kick them off. We simply said that moving forward any time a new slot opens, they're being replaced. So we've actually been very consistent in making sure that we are eliminating the impact of lobbyists. Day in, day out, on how this administration operates. There have been a handful of waivers where somebody is highly skilled for example. A 
a doctor who ran tobacco-free kids technically is a registered lobbyist, on the other end. has more experience than anybody in figuring out how kids don't get hooked on cigarettes. So there have been a couple of instances like that, but generally we've been very consistent on that front. Congressman Pence, Marsha Blackburn, Tennessee. Congresswoman Blackburn, thank you, MR. President and thank you for acknowledging that we have ideas on health care because Indeed, we do have ideas, we have plans, we have over 50 bills. We have lots of amendments that would bring healthcare ideas to the forefront. We would we've got plans to lower cost, to change purchasing models, address medical liability. Insurance accountability, chronic and pre-existing conditions. And access to affordable care for those with those conditions, insurance portability, expanded access but not doing it with creating more government. more bureaucracy, and more cost for the American taxpayer. And we look forward to sharing those ideas with you. We want to work with you on health reform and making certain that we do it in an affordable cost-effective way that is going to reduce bureaucracy. Reduce government interference and reduce costs to individuals and to taxpayers. And if those good ideas aren't making it to you, Maybe it's the House Democrat leadership that is an impediment instead of a conduit. 